Where are we, Milano? High-speed rail travel is a godsend for a country like Italy. The ability to zip expeditiously between major city centres without fuss is something to be admired. And today, we're doing it in business class. So is it worth it? Well, let's find out. Ah. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, f everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Good morning guys and welcome back to my video and today I'm coming to you from the beautiful city of canals, the city of love and this is Venice in Italy and what I'm doing today is I'm getting on board a train, a cross-country train from Italy into Switzerland so I'm getting from Venice to Zurich but I will make a stop in Milan where I will switch the train and I'll take another one to Switzerland so come along with me to see what this experience is like from here in Stazione di Venezia, Santa Lucia to Milano Centralo. And that's our first stop for this trip. Let's do this. This morning, we're beginning our journey at Stazione di Venezia Santa Lucia. In the daylight, you can see the building's facade is modernist and fascist in nature, which was the trend back in the late 20s and early 30s. Construction of this terminal was done between 1936 to 1943, interrupted in between by the Second World War. It was finally completed to this present structure we see today in 1952. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home, and I create heaps of travel and foodie content. This trip to Venice is a small part of a wider travel series which sees us set foot in seven countries over two and a half weeks. Our first stop was Singapore, where we went to France and then ended up in Malta, where we'd spend most of our time in. From there, we'd travel through Italy, Switzerland, UK and finally Vietnam before returning home to Australia. So this travel series will include heaps of flight reviews, train journeys, and destination vlogs to last a few months, and they will be linked in the description below as and when they're published. If you don't wish to miss any episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever they go to air. Giving me a like will encourage me to keep content flowing. So here's a thanks because your support is very much appreciated. FYI, there's already a video on the train journey from Rome to Venice, which we took in premium class. Make sure you catch up on that if you haven't. Today, we're getting on Train Italia between Venice and Milan in business class. So this will be a great opportunity to compare the two products. Train Italia is the primary provider of train services within Italy. They come under the umbrella of the larger Gruppo Ferrovie dello Stato Italiane, which is partly owned by the government. And this state-owned company manages most transport infrastructure-related businesses within Italy and other European countries. By the way, Ferrovie dello Stato Italiane is one of the oldest companies in Italy having been around since 1905. The rolling stock of choice for this morning's journey was an NS High Speed V250 built by Ansaldo Breda in Italy. Train Italia took delivery of 19 of these sets in 2017 and rebranded them as Electro Treno Rapido 700 or the ETR 700. It has a face only a mother could love giving me serious vibes of an equally beautiful Fiat Multipla. Welcome on board the business class cabin on the Freccia Rosa. It's configured in a 2x1, with seats facing both directions of travel. 
and we've once again chosen the seats facing each other. It does look extremely drab with different shades of grey and light brown, without any contrasting tones to offset this no-nonsense baby milky shitty colour palette. The power ports are located beneath every seat, and the USB slots did charge my devices very quickly though. These headrests look like they can move in a million directions, but they're fixed in place so don't go ripping them off. There's a rubbish bin located right here. And finally, this fake recline is disappointing to say the least. We pull away from the station on time at 7.18am. Since Stazione di Santa Lucia is located on an island, our journey begins over the two mile long causeway over the Venetian lagoon towards the mainland. And the first stop we pull into is Stazione di Venezia Mestre, which is the railway station serving the Mestre Capenedo district of Venice mainland. Venezia Mestre is one of the two important stations in Venice, the other being Venezia Santa Lucia where we departed from. Venezia Mestre never closes, whereas Venezia Santa Lucia is shut at night and only opens their doors for early morning trains like ours. There are buses which operate 24-7, which links Venezia Mestre to Piazzale Roma on Venice Island in case you need to get to and from late night trains from this station. After departing Venezia Mestre, there is a cart and a friendly attendant coming around. I love that she only spoke Italian to everyone she came into contact with, <laughs> including me, allowing me to practice the language I've spent so much time trying to master before my trip. Si, prendere un te, per favore. We were given a meal box, a very elaborately packaged box of a welcome card, wet wipes, and two plastic wrapped biscuits. I know packaging is everything and I gotta admit, the branding is top notch. But this is a lot of wasted environmental real estate for what's essentially two pieces of biscuits, don't you think? That being said, these sweet treats were rather tasty. And by now, we were hurtling down the track at just over 200 kilometers an hour towards our next destination. As we pull into Padova, Let's take a deep dive into how the tracks between Venice and Milan came about. Today, we look at Italy as a whole. But many of us tend to forget, just like most countries in this region, Italy was subjected to many invasions by different forces back then, from the French, Spanish, Arabs, and this region we're in, between Milan and Venice, was ruled by the Austrian Empire from 1815 to 1866. This kingdom was known as Lombardy Venetia, which encompasses present-day Milan and Venice. These two cities were considered joint capitals, so the need to connect them with transportation lines was imperative. Therefore, from 1842, the first tracks were laid from Milan, concluding in 1846 with final portions of the track completed across the Venetian lagoon between Mestre and Venice. We're now pulling into Stazione di Vicenza. As part of the Austrian Empire, the population of Vicenza retaliated against their overlords more violently than other Italian centres during that period within the Kingdom of Lombardy Venetia. This characteristic would surface again during World War II, as Vicenza became the focal point of Italian resistance towards the Allied forces. This resulted in the city being the most damaged in the region during the war by Allied bombings. Vicenza also lost many of its precious historical monuments during that period, and that was also underscored by a high number of civilian casualties. Just like other high-speed trains, there is a cafe car should you get munchy. However, we've just had a full brekkie from the hotel in Venice, so I was giving this cafe a skip this morning. By the way, Wi-Fi is also available on board all of Train Italia's high-speed trains, and the connection is quick, easy, and more importantly, the speed is very fast. 
And speaking of fast speed, the maximum speed we clocked in today's ride came in at 275 km per hour. Unlike the previous train I was on, between Rome and Venice, today's ride never went below 200. A point to note though, a lot of these trains are built to travel at speeds of up to 360 km per hour. But the operational speed is capped within Italy at 300. As we approach the city of Verona, we cross the Adige River. As one of Italy's longest rivers, it starts at a border with Switzerland and Austria and flows a total of 410 kilometers towards the Adriatic Sea. Pity about the dreary weather though, otherwise this would have been such a picturesque moment. We are now pulling into Stazione di Verona Porta Nuova. It is the main railway station serving the city of Verona, with a population of just under 260,000 people. My first introduction to Verona was actually in high school, where I studied Romeo and Juliet. And that Shakespearean play is set right here in this beautiful city. Besides that play, the Two Gentlemen of Verona is also another play from Shakespeare which is set here. His focus on this city by the river is most interesting because there are no records of him ever visiting. We've now left the region of Veneto and have crossed over into the region of Lombardy. And this is the town of Brescia. And if you are a pair of Asian tiger parents putting your offsprings through a pathway of being a doctor with a side of violin lessons, listen closely because Brescia is thought to be the location where this string instrument began to make its mark in the 15th century. Today, this proud city is known for its resistance against the fascist movement during World War II. In essence, going against the country's ruler. Stazione di Brescia is one of the few train stations in Italy constructed in a neoclassical style. It handles close to 20 million passenger movements annually and it's in itself a major stopping point for numerous high-speed services to Torino, Roma, Bergamo and Napoli. Since we're now so close to an international border to the north, there are also train services to Munich, Vienna, Geneva and Zurich. From here on, this is the final phase of today's train journey. Because the next stop we're pulling into would be Milan. So this is a good time for me to sum up my thoughts about high-speed rail travel in Italy. The country is mostly thin in a north-south direction and having these rail lines in place is seriously a godsend for a country like Italy, whose air travel can sometimes be challenging and their airports aren't exactly the best out there. A lot of today's commuters don't necessarily live close to their place of work. So this mode of transport is quick and efficient and more importantly kind to the environment because of its electrification. Therefore, metropolitan centres within Italy are now more connected than ever as high-speed rail continues to evolve. Are there negative points to it? Hardly. However, one small gripe I have is about their punctuality. My last journey was 1 hour 35 minutes late without an explanation. So Italian high-speed rail's on-time performance is definitely no match when you compare it to their Asian counterparts like the Shinkansen in Japan or the KTX in Korea. Those two cited examples are punctual to the T, with almost military precision. Today, we pull into Stazione di Milano Centrale at 9.49 am. 11 minutes late. So by Italian terms, I'm sure this is acceptable. But I'm sure the Japanese and Koreans would be squirming in discomfort at this predicament. So before anyone passes out from a brain aneurysm, let's wrap up 
by joining Live Ryan out on the platform to conclude this video. Well guys, this is Milan Centrale and welcome to Milan. We're here for a little transit. Um, so we're gonna try and look for where the platform is for our train to Zurich. So in the meantime, um, I will end the video here and um, I will chuck details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So hit me up there and chuck me a follow so you can actually see where am I traveling to in real time. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you've done this train before let me know in the comments and if you haven't um, let me know as well in the comments if you want to do it uh, after watching this video because I would very much love to hear from you so anyway I'll say goodbye to you here as I head to my train to Zurich and I will see you for the next video ciao